Hi, I'm Amy. Thank you for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to talk about books that I've hauled recently. As usual, there seems to be quite a few. This time there's a mixture of um, Buffy books that I'm getting to try and complete my collection, um, some books that I've pre-ordered and some other second-hand books that I've bought. So let's get to it and I'll share the things that I've got in the past few weeks. So first off, we've got Lord of the Fly Fest by Goldie Mordovsky. I was a huge fan of The Last Girl by Goldie that came out last year. Um, so I'm really excited about this one, which is about um, a music festival that goes horribly wrong. Um, and it says on the back, um, when Rafi lands a ticket for Fly Fest, the hottest ticket in town, she can't believe her luck. But a trip to a dream island soon turns into a nightmare. While the celebrities are losing their minds and their luggage, Rafi decides to investigate River Stone, a mysterious musician. But River is harbouring a dark secret and Rafi stands to lose a lot more than her dignity. That sounds really, really good. Can't wait to read that. Next we have Stein Tinglers, which I pre-ordered from Forbidden Planet because it is a lovely signed edition. I don't think I've got anything signed by R.L. Stein, so that's really exciting. Also, impressed with anybody who came up with that title. I just love it. Um, it's a book of short stories, all new ones um, that I won't have read before, so I'm definitely going to try and get these read during spooky season. Another pre-order that came out um, end of August, I think, this one. And Clan of Cornfield 2, Friendo Lives. I loved Clan in Cornfield. Um, I just thought that the slasher vibes were so cinematic and reminiscent of those 90s horror movies that I love. Um, so the sequel um, is something that I've been really looking forward to. Um, I was just thinking about reading the blurb, but I'm not going to because I don't want to spoil it for myself. Or for anyone else watching this, because this is one of my really highly anticipated reads. Next up, a book that I'm really looking forward to too, Bloody Fall for Love, um, a Spike prequel, and he's crossed out Buffy on the front, um, by William Ritter. I haven't heard much about this, but somebody, well, quite a few somebody's actually messaged me and said, did you know there's a Spike book coming out? So of course I immediately ordered it, um, because Spike is one of my favourite characters. So again, no spoilers here, I'm not going to read the blurb because I just want to be surprised by this one. I always have high hopes for things with Spike in that um, I want the voice to match his character and his character traits so I'm really hoping that this one will deliver on that. Next my pre-order are The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I've loved the other two books in this series so I'm looking forward to seeing how the trilogy will wrap up and how the mystery will be solved. Next I bought a stack of Buffy books second hand um, as I mentioned I'm trying to complete my collection so we have are there a series in here? Oh so we have a series called Unseen we've got I don't know what order these are in but we've got Unseen Long Way Home, Unseen Daughter Alternity okay interesting, Unseen The Burning and then we have Buffy Crossings and Return to Chaos. And I had a lot of these in the 90s. I did collect them and then did that stupid thing of getting rid of them um, or putting them somewhere that I can't remember where they are. Um, so I am trying to rebuild the books that I once had and I, I don't, think, don't even know whether they're in print anymore. So I've just been buying them secondhand. Next up, we have the latest Point Horror Hall. My collection is coming together nice. I can't remember what shelf it's on now. One of the shelves up there behind me. Um, so I'm just kind of working my way through the list and trying to pick up books. Some excellent quality ones, um, condition ones from eBay, which I'm always really pleased about when the spines aren't too broken. So we've got Silent Witness. I do remember this one a bit from back in the day when I read them in the 90s. Um, Amnesia, I don't think I've read, although the cover looks vaguely familiar, so that will be interesting. And The Surfer, pretty sure I haven't read this one by Linda Cargill, so I'm looking forward to giving that a go. So the next thing I got was um, The Blair Witch Project. I remembered having this um, when the film came out and when the marketing cleverly made people believe that it was a real um, like true crime series based on something that actually happened to people. And I think that this book is written in a similar way. I don't know whether it actually reveals the fact that it isn't real or not and that it's acts involved, but I just thought it'd be fun. I remember really liking this when I read it in my teens, so I thought I'd get another copy. And that is it for now. So I've decided to do a little haul video um, because I've bought a few books recently, been given something lovely and bought myself a couple of interesting things. So I thought I'd share what I've got recently. And I'm going to stand up to show you this one because I went to an indie shop in Hull that sells quite cool things like lounge flies um, and printed t-shirts. Um, it's by, This particular one is by Grim Designs and look, it is a <laughs> Scream t-shirt. As in the screen movie and the screen painting, which 
I thought was really cool. So I'm going to be wearing that in future videos. I really, really like it. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely going to go back to that shop in the future. Um, it was in Princess Key in Hull, if you're interested or if you're local. And it was a really interesting place to shop, definitely. Um, while I was in Hull, I did a signing at Waterstones. And one of the lovely girls who came to meet me, um, called Roxy, had made me this, which just absolutely made my day. Um, for those who don't know, it's the Buffy Grr Arg. Grr Arg. Sort of catchphrase, I guess, that comes up at the end of every Buffy episode. It's sort of the cutest and coolest thing I think I've ever been given. Um, certainly the only thing like that that I've been given at an event. So thank you so much. I love this. I'm going to put it up somewhere in my room. I think it deserves to go in some sort of place of honour in my Buffy collection, definitely. Next, I've become really into the Sucky Stackhouse books, which we've been reading as part of the Fictional Hangover book club. Um, and we've only been reading one a month and I tend to read it really early in the month and then absolutely crave more and can't read them until next month. Um, so I decided to get into another Charlene Harris series. So I've picked up some books secondhand, um, which is the Aurora Tea Garden series. So I'll just show you the covers. They're very cute and cosy um, in no particular order. They've all got kind of cute, cosy mystery titles as well. So we've got three bedrooms, one corpse. Dead over heels. The Julius House. Real murders. I don't know why I'm reading these. You can see them on the screen, hopefully, but now I've started. A Bone to Pick and A Fool and His Honey. And I read the first one of these on my Kindle and they're just so fun um, and light. And like I said, cosy and Aurora Tea Garden um, in the start is in sort of a true crime club um, of true crime enthusiasts. And she continues that interest through the books. Um, I'm just having a lot of fun with them. I think I've read the first one or two on my Kindle so far. Um, and I'm definitely going to read the rest of them now in the physical copies now I've got them. Those, I don't think are all of the books and series. I think there are about 10, but I'm hoping to get all of them and read them as quickly as I can since I'm not kind of tied to any book club at the moment with those. Um, I also got an early copy of The Lighthouse. Um, they had this in Drake Bookshop where I was doing a signing the other day. And I'm a huge fan of the Red Eye books um, published by Stripes. And um, this one comes out in October, but they actually had it in slightly early. So I'm really excited to pick it up. I really love Frozen Charlotte and the prequel Charlotte Says by Alex Bell. are probably two of my favourites of the Red Eyes and favourite horror books in general. I didn't realise that this was coming out so soon and I certainly didn't expect to pick it up early. So I will be adding this to my September TBR and reading it probably in the next week. I've, I've ordered a few fun things recently, things that I've been sent or that I've ordered, um, so I thought I would share a few of them with you now. Um, I've hauled the latest um, Point Horror Book Club read, um, Nightmare Hall, The Roommate, um, which I remember reading back in the day, but I'm looking forward to giving this one a read this month um, and then watching the chat that um, Shelley from Tales of Point Horror Book Club um, will be doing on Instagram Live later in the month. Then we have a Buffy comic. Um, I stopped in at Waterstones lately and saw one I don't have, um, so I thought I'd give this one a go. Um, it says that this is the Buffy Summers you know who wants what every average teenager wants. Friends at her new school, decent grades, and to escape her imposed destiny as the next in a long line of vampire slayers. Only this time around, her world looks a lot more like the one outside your window. So I think this is a new take on Buffy with new friends. Um, but it says the more things change, the more they stay the same as the gang faces brand new big bads and the threat lurking beneath the perfectly manicured exterior of Sunnydale High confirms what every teenager has always known. High school truly is hell. Welcome back to the Hellmouth for the first time. I've got no idea what any of that means. Like, are we dealing with the same characters? I assume it's the same Buffy from the cover. Um, but I'm quite intrigued by that. So I'll let you know how I get on with that one. Next, um, I have been working alongside um, the Short Story Award as an ambassador for them for quite a few years and they've kindly sent me the shortlisted stories for this year. It is always a brilliant read. Um, it's available for purchase from Comma Press and I think that you can get it from bookshops and online as well. Um, so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. The stories are always really varied. People um, from lots of different backgrounds write them um, and I always like to read before the announcement of the winner and try and figure out who I would pick. So thank you so much Comma Press for sending me this one. I'm really looking forward to reading it. Next, um, my lovely friend Mia Kushnia um, sent me a, pr a publication present when Mina and the Sires came out. Oh, look how cute it is. 
So it's some Sylvanian families. I think me and either I already have one little spooky set, um, but these are the trick or treat ones and I just love them. So at some point I'm going to unbox that and then put it on my shelf. My toddler's already eyeing it, but I've told them <laughs> that this one is mummy's toy. Um, I might let him have a little play if he's really good. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Mia. I love this one um, and I'm looking forward to putting it on my shelves. So I've hauled a few items today and I thought I would share them as part of this video. Um, first up, I've got a couple of books that have been sent by a publisher. I don't know what they are yet. Um, and then I got some Halloween stuff that I ordered from George that's just arrived today. Oh, cool. So this is, oh, Gina Blacksell's new book. Awesome. I didn't know I was getting this one, but I had forgotten. Um, good enough to eat. Um, I really liked You Can Trust Me by Gina Blacksell. Look at this beautiful cover. Um, this one is a sort of fairy tale style book, I think. So I'm going to read you the blurb. There is a witch in the woods who kidnaps boys. The village of Westerline is suffering a harsh winter, but the threat of the witch is worse. If you venture into the woods, beware entering the witch's cottage, because no one leaves there alive. So when Hansel and Gretel return unharmed, Hansel is hailed a hero, but Gretel knows the truth and it demands to be unravelled. How did they escape? What really happened in the witch's cottage? The dark and irresistible twist on the classic fairy tale, and it says, also available, All the Better to See You by Gina Blacksell. Oh, cool. So Gina has also written another book that I didn't know about in this series. I'm not sure if this one is YA or middle grade, but it sounds brilliant. Um, thank you so much, Scholastic, for sending it to me. Oh, cool. So also we have um, from Scholastic, um, All the Jingle Ladies, what a title, um, by Beth Garrard. Beth Garrard is one of my favourite YA contemporary authors. She gets the teen voice so well. Her book's always really funny and fun. Um, like Take a Chance on Me, it's super awkward um, and she wrote a Christmas book um, that came out last year as well um, and I'm assuming that this one is Christmassy as well. Um, it says, this season learn to love your elf, cute. Um, Molly hates Christmas, ever since her family released their cheesy Christmas single complete with Molly dressed as a cute little elf, December has gone from ho 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 to hu humiliating and now the songs on the soundtrack of the hottest festive film, the mortifying melodies everywhere again. This year is really not the season to be Molly, but when Molly finds herself making a Christmas connection with a cute guy from the movie's premiere, will she finally find a happy ending or make a big mistletoe mess? That sounds brilliant. So what I've got here from Scholastic is Halloween book and a book for Christmas. So thank you so much for those. Next we have Beetlejuice t-shirt. I've been wanting to get more Beetlejuice stuff. I myself am strange. I'm... <laughs> can't speak. I myself am strange and unusual. One of my favourite quotes from Beetlejuice. I myself am strange and unusual. Very cool. And I have to admit, I did squeak a little bit. It's a Buffy t-shirt. I only have one Buffy t-shirt, I think. So that one's really cool. Looks like it's going to be nice and comfy. Oh yeah, I remember this one too. This is a tiny little jumper. Well, my toddler to wear around Halloween. Very cute. I like that a lot. So far George are doing amazing with the Halloween stuff. Um, some cute Halloween bedding. This side. A lovely orange Halloween throw with some cute pumpkins on it. And the thing I did remember ordering Nightmare for Christmas pillow. I love that so much. That was the thing that made me want to order. And then of course I went and got carried away. So thank you so much for watching and I will let you know how I get on with the books in a future video.